How's it going guys? Welcome to Working at Home with Luke and my review of the Dell XPS 15 In this episode, we're going to take a quick look at my brand new Dell um, XPS 15 9560 laptop, which is brand new, and I bought it for some very specific reasons. I had a, I had a very good um, Alienware laptop, 18 Alienware 18, that I had for such a long time, but it couldn't edit 4K video was the first thing that was starting to let it down. It couldn't play the one game in the whole world that I play, and it's massive. The, the laptop itself is massive, and the power adapter for it as well is absolutely humongous. So I had to buy it, I had to, to spend a lot of time researching for a new laptop that I wanted, and the Dell XPS 15 9560 is what I've landed on. So I thought I would do a quick review or a quick look at my Dell laptop, um, because I see a lot, there's a lot of reviews online and they're really, really good, but they're a bit too techy for me. They do these bench tests and stuff that really don't mean a lot to me other than in comparison to another machine, which is useful in itself. But um, it would have been much more useful if, if I could see the machine doing exactly what I wanted it to do. So first of all, let's have a look at the outside of this laptop. So it's like a, not brushed to steel, I don't know what the material is that you would call this, but it's a very, one of the things that these machines and Dell prize this machine on is the build quality and it is it's absolutely superb this kind of metal finish on the outside two rubber bands running the full length of it at the bottom there like the, the pads for it to stand on um, it's just it does it looks absolutely amazing and it's quite light I think I mean I'm coming from a really mo you know a monster of a laptop with an 18 inch screen that weighs an absolute ton um, and this thing is absolutely wicked so if we take a look at the ends at the ports and stuff so you'll see on here, you've got your power lead there, the USB, I guess it's a USB 3.0 there. You've got the HDMI lead in. You've got this, I can't think what they call that now. It's like the brand new USB port that, you know, I can plug my phone in with that one there. Headphone port, which apparently is getting more rare on computers with Apple leading the way on that front. And then if we look at the other side, you've got another USB 3 port there. You've got the SD card reader there, which is brilliant. I love that. And then something that I've only noticed for the first time now, whatever that button there is. So yeah, that's about it in terms of the ports and on the and, and the actual outside of the machine. Apparently it's quite easy to get the bottom of this off for upgrading your RAM. You've got the 10 um, Torx heads screws there and then you lift this flap up and then inside there's a couple of Phillips heads in there and then you click the back off. These two here are obviously the speakers which are not very good but it's a laptop, I'm not really too bothered about that. So then if we open the computer up, you'll see straight away that it's a bit of a ball ache to open actually. I'm a bit fingers and thumbs, got big sausage fingers, but it's not the easiest laptop in the world to open and you always end out, I always end up pushing my nail into the screen at the bottom there, which I don't want to be doing because it's kind of bezel-less. You end out pushing, you end up with a thumbprint there every time. So it's not brilliant, it's quite difficult to open, but it is it is an awesome looking thing. This carbon fiber finish on the top here is really great trackpad's great i really like the keypad um a lot of people don't like i think the lack of responsiveness or something of it but i i find it fine it obviously doesn't have the number pad which i do like but it again i wouldn't want for the whole keyboard to fill up the full width of the laptop i don't think so i really like the layout of it in terms of the look um it's absolutely superb so just before we continue it's probably best that i tell you exactly what it is that i need from a laptop so we'll go through them in kind of importance in order of importance so I needed a laptop that would be a lot better at editing my old Alienware 18 it was so difficult to edit you had to render the full um, sequence so often just so as it played smooth while you're editing it whereas with this machine with like full HD 1080p footage it just runs smooth you can layer 
effects, overlay color, you can layer video on top of video on top of video and it still tracks through the footage really smooth so you don't have to bother with rendering your footage all the time. Really great for that. It'll edit 4K, I don't shoot a lot in 4K but it does edit in 4K which is another really important thing that I needed. So the first thing that I needed was a video editing machine. The second thing I needed was I played one game in my whole life. One game, that's it. And it's Football Manager, the latest one, 2018 came out this year. 2017 didn't run particularly well on my old Alienware laptop, but it was okay. This year's um, Football Manager 18 was really, really bad, really laggy. Um, yeah, almost unplayable. And this machine, I'm happy to report, plays Football Manager really well, but we'll have a look at that as well in a minute. So that's my second thing that I need from a laptop. And the third is that it's just got to be a multitasking beast it's got to be able to edit while i'm surfing the internet while i'm doing something else while i've got a word document open an excel document open it's just got to stay nice and quick while i multitask and then four for my job i'm probably going to end up doing a bit of travel and the alienware laptop plus the transformer whatever you call it for the power you know the power box for it as well it weighs like seven kilos it must be at least seven or eight kilos whereas this is an entirely different kettle of fish the laptop itself is nice and light the transformer for it is nice and light it's you know it's the it's the whole package so they're the four things that i need the laptop for Right, so the next things I want to do are the startup time and we're going to take a look at the screen as well. So what I've done is I've set up my um, Samsung S8 mobile phone looking straight in the Dell um, screen. So the first thing that you'll notice if I go over to this camera is the reflectiveness. I mean, I've got studio lighting on here. The screen is gloss. This is the 4K version. Um, it's got the 512 mega, uh, gigabyte hard drive i've got 16 gig of ram then it's got the intel 7700 chip and then it's got the gtx 1050 graphics card in there as well so this like i say is the 4k screen the touch screen you can see how reflective it is but that's a studio light right there pointing straight at it um what i'll do is i'll switch it on now we'll have a look at the startup time and then what i'll do is in this worst case scenario because everyone talks about glare in this worst case scenario that you could ever possibly have and you would never experience this in day-to-day -day working but we'll basically be able to see what this with this level of glare with it off how that will kind of end out looking when it's not on so what i'm going to do is i'll start up right now all of these tests are going to be with it plugged in as well That's it started up, and that's it switched on. Now that's not a particularly bright screen at the minute. The setting is going to be quite low at 50, I think, and it's also a very dull looking screen. So as the text pops off it really well. So if I turn it up to 100, and then start something up like Chrome, you can see like this glare problem. Like I can I can see bits and pieces, but like I say, I've got a studio like behind me. If I was sat working on the laptop like this, now I'm also sat offset to the laptop actually, which makes it worse. But if I was sat working on this laptop now, this glare thing wouldn't be bothering me at all. I wouldn't even factor it into buying this machine. But you can see that that's the um, that's it started up. It's like I say, it's the touch screen, um, and I hope the phone the phone is is recording in 4K. This is obviously a 4K screen, and I hope the phone does it justice. This is absolutely awesome this screen just completely like pops out at you if i i don't know if this is going to work but what i'll do is i'll stick a 4k youtube video on if i can find one So obviously I'm streaming this online, so there's going to be lag, there's going to be a bit of pixelation because the internet's not very fast here either. But I think you can probably see even off, off the Samsung phone. I mean, you can still see glare. What I'll do actually is I'll switch these lights off so it's more like what it would actually be if you were using this laptop in a room that's not got studio lights on. Yeah, as you can see, the screen is just absolutely 
magnificent. Nothing else can be said about it, really. Right, so let's move on to actually testing some of the functions with the computer. I want to play Football Manager for you to see. I want to actually record some of the screen um, using OBS, so as you can see. So let's get on with that. Right, guys, so we're jumping into computer now. The first thing I'm going to do is start up Football Manager, which is just running through startup now. I'll show you that on the other camera now. I've got this second camera set up basically more to ca capture audio than anything else. The the game runs really sweet on this laptop. Um, it does most of the things actually that I want it to really, really well. But um, I do want you to hear the sound. When you actually start playing the game, the actual loading up of the game and running through the sort of, you know, the day-to-day the -day running of the game is fine. But as soon as you actually start playing a football match and watching it in 3D mode, then the laptop doesn't struggle, but the laptop then starts picking up speeds and makes a lot of noise. Okay, so the only two bits of software that are running at the moment on the computer are Football Manager and OBS, which is doing the screen recording. We'll go to the screen recording now and we'll go to the Samsung S8 sound now as well because the fan is actually just starting to pick up. So we'll just have a quick look at how the CPU and everything is doing while playing Football Manager. Not responding, that's never a brilliant thing, is it? So 49% on the CPU and 48% on the memory. It doesn't normally use that much CPU, so I'm assuming that's the OBS software. Right, so what I'll do is I'll stop recording with OBS. And shut OBS down. Right, so straight away the game is running smoother actually, just without having the OBS running. And we're down to 16, 13, 11% CPU and 36% memory. So it runs like an absolute dream football manager on this computer. It really is great. My phone will be shooting in 24 frames per second, so obviously the, it will be a lot less lag. Not lag, but that kind of cinematic blur that you're getting behind the, behind the players there and stuff. So yeah, that's how Football Manager runs on this computer. Okay guys, so this is me editing footage from earlier on. Um, I've got a 1080p file there on top of a 4K, on top of another 4K, and then all the sound files as well. So if I disappear the 1080p to see the first 4K, which is my Samsung, and then I'll disappear the Samsung footage to reveal the GoPro footage that was above me. This starts off a bit laggy and then it's smooth as silk again now. Um, so yeah, it, it really does edit quite well. I did have a little bit of problem with the bottom layer, this bottom 4K one just now, freezing a lot more than what it just has here. But all in all, it seems pretty good, I'm quite happy with it. Um, what I'll do in a minute is I'll just show you the actual rendering of the of the file as well. I'm sorry that I'm having to do this with my phone, with my camera pointing at the screen, but the reason I'm doing that is because OBS, the OBS software package that I use to record the screen just doesn't work properly. I need to have a fiddle with that to get it working better. So we'll have a look at the render times in a minute. Actually, having just said that, that makes no sense because I can't render the whole thing until I have this bit of footage that I'm filming now in the video so I don't know how I'm going to do that unless by magic so what I'm going to have to do is I'll render this now it's a 15 minute and 38 clip at the minute I'll cut it down from that I'll imagine for the final edit but there's 4k in there stacked up on top of each other which I'll tidy up in a minute it's just a bit of a beast of a render no color correcting but lots of, of video overlaid on top of video that's video that's video that's video so we'll export this and see how long that takes so what I'll do because this is such a last of a clip instead of recording every second of it I'll just get a stopwatch going on my phone um, so if I press export and that at the same time right we're underway it's gonna be it's like a four and a half uh, gig file this loads of 4k in there so it's gonna take half an hour or so I'd imagine so I'll leave that going and come back in a minute Okay, so we're just finishing that render. Three, two, one, now. So we'll call that 42 minutes. It's still got that kind of last bit of encoding or whatever it is that it's doing it now that normally takes 20 seconds. That's it powering down now, so it's done. That little box will disappear. It's become an MP4, so that is it done there. So we'll call that 4310. 
to render basically a four and a half gig um, 4K clip. We'll just quickly check that that was a good render or a good export. So if a four and a half gig 4K um, like 16 minute video isn't something that you'd usually do, this is a bit more reasonable. It's about one gig, 923 meg. It's a 1080p video that's just under 10, uh, sorry, just under eight minutes long. And it's got a color overlay right the way through as well. So let's have a quick look at this one. Okay, so that's it hit 100%. And that's it done at 6 minutes and 12 seconds. So 6 minutes and 12 seconds for a 923 megabyte, um, 7 minute and 54 seconds, 1080p HD video to render. So that's that's really quick. Um, yeah, and that's it for the, for the Premiere Pro editing stuff. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it for my review of the Dell XPS 15 9560. If I just have a quick recap, I want the computer to play Football Manager, it does that absolutely superb. I want the machine to edit um, and edit 4K, so on those two fronts it's perfect. Portability, it's absolutely superb, you've seen it just now by comparison to the side of my, size of my hand, it's got the 15 inch screen, it's a wonderful light and compact laptop, especially compared to my old Alienware, so it definitely ticks the box on that front. And then obviously in terms of multitasking, it, I can't really show you that properly, with the, it, but it, it does, there are a few things where it kind of falls short, it's not an app absolute powerhouse of a laptop if I wanted to be honest if I went for the Alienware laptop the and then got more RAM this will run faster with more RAM but it, it works really really well um, but it's just not because it's an ultrabook because it's quite lightweight I don't find it as impressive say as when I first got my Alienware 18 it's a really really good laptop and really really powerful for how small and compact it is the screen superb so yeah all in all a really good laptop the only thing I have had with it is twice now I've had the dreaded blue screen um, which I really didn't expect I've updated all the drivers and everything updated windows and that's not happened again since so that's my review of the Dell XPS 15 9560 it does everything that I need it to do i had a few teething problems with it with the blue screen but all in all it's been a fantastic laptop so far i might do an update but other than that that's it for my review thanks a lot guys catch you next time